G'day guys and welcome to the project boat series. Uh, it's been a little bit of a uh, process in the making this this project and uh, I'm very excited to um, finally get it on the water and uh, show you guys what this thing's made of. If you follow us on Instagram you would have seen some posts uh, regarding this uh, Haynes Hunter 600R. So uh, if you followed us before you'll know that we've been running around in a V17L which has been an absolutely fantastic boat. Uh, I've We've pretty much caught every game fish species you can think of out of that and uh, it's uh, proven itself to be such a capable little game, bo game boat but it's uh, now up for sale and uh, we're uh, looking to upgrade to bigger and better things and, and a 600R has always been on my list as a boat that I definitely have uh, and a project boat is something I've always wanted to do as well so really looking forward to uh, hooking into this thing and really turning it into something special and uh, one of a kind that's for sure so look I'll just start by uh, taking you around the boat here and we'll um we'll have a look at uh, the good points and the bad points and we'll talk through uh, what we're gonna do to make this thing better bigger stronger and uh, yeah let's get right into it So I guess I'll go straight to the business end of things and uh, what's pushing this this, uh, this six meter boat along at the moment is a Yamaha F200 uh, four stroke. Uh, definitely one of my favorite engines, it's four cylinder. They're incredible on fuel and uh, they've got a lot of torque and a lot of power. Uh, Yamaha, obviously they come with that reliability factor that is just second to none in my opinion and, and it always will stand. Um, the, uh, I'll show you some uh, footage later of the skeg, so, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about how that damage occurred later on, but at the moment, uh, it's basically due for a little bit of a skeg repair, which is not too much of an issue, a bit of aluminium welding, and uh, that'll fix that up. But other than that, it's pretty good. 41 hours this engine had on the clock when we bought it. It's a 2015 model with 41 hours, and, uh, Basically, this motor's brand new, so we've uh, scored there, and that's that's probably the main reason which was the deciding factor in me buying this boat. Uh, definitely that powerhouse right there. So, look, guys, uh, at the moment you can see the boat's got a pod on the back. Um, look, in my opinion, and, and we'll go for a test drive, and I'll get the drone up and show you guys uh, what it's like. In my opinion pods were never meant to be on these boats it's changing the waterline length but uh, without a hull extension underneath which is basically extending the hull hull without that and just bolting a pot on the back moving the engine further back it changes a lot of the weight characteristics so the, bo the boats tend to want to lift their nose out of the water a lot more with this configuration and what that causes is porpoising now this boat doesn't porpoise because it's got that perma trim uh, hydrofoil on the motor now everybody knows if you have to put one of them on a boat it's not right for the boat, so something can be changed there. And, 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 and the pod is the contributing factor to that. It also changes the handling characteristics in the turning as well. So instead of banking nice and tight into a turn, it just turns like a pig. It feels like it's, it's on a rail that you can't get it off. So it, it's, it's going its way and you want it to go another way. So look, uh, we're probably going to get rid of that pod and make the transom section here all a flat back uh, well again with it with an engine well now with that we're probably going to lose some space so we're going to have to come in probably 700 800 mil from the transom where the boat probably originally was and then and then cut in uh, our, our well back and we'll have storage either side and then we're going to put a nice big live bait tank off the front there so that is the plan at this stage uh, I, the pod is great for the room you get in here, but unfortunately, I, I, I just don't like the way that the, the vessel rides and handles with it. And uh, for me, also when we're game fishing, to have a pod hanging all the way off the back of the boat there like that, if you're hooked up, harnessed up, fighting a fish here, and that fish decides to run around the back of the boat, if you're harnessed up and you, you, you can't unclip quickly enough to get the rod out over the back of the motor, you'll lose the fish. Where if the motor's in the well back and it's further forward on the transom here, you're far better off, you're in a way better position to, uh, to try and manoeuvre that rod around there. So that's one of the biggest contributing factors for me. Now as far as electronics and uh, kit goes, it's pretty basic. We've got uh, an old Furuno 
um, GPS there that's not even mounted in properly. The sounder doesn't work on that. So it was after market fitted Garmin sounder. The transducer's running uh, through through the hull down here, which, you know, isn't that great. So as far as electronics goes, look, I might, I might take this Garmin out and whack it in the tinny. Um, but uh, really at the end of the day, you know, there's probably not much worth salvaging much of this, you know, probably just give it away in the end. And so under the cabin, in here, we've got some, a VHF and a, uh, a VHF and a, uh, a 27 megahertz radio. Look, you know, it's there. It's for the standard we want to bring that boat to. We're going to put all new equipment in. As you can see, there's a wiring debacle on that side. <clears throat> the steering, uh, the old Admiralty, uh, Admiralty uh, helm there. Look, it's the ram on the back there is a racing ram, so it doesn't go to the full 35 degrees, which it should, which is frustrating um, because you can't turn the boat as sharp as you want to turn it. For low speed maneuvering, obviously, that's where it's affected most. High speed, not too much, um, but it's very slow and cumbersome to turn. It's uh, not, not the ideal steering, so that's all gonna have to come out. A little bit of history to this boat. So the owner, the owner had it uh, for quite a number of years in Queensland. Now, he decided to uh, rebuild it once he found his floor was uh, rotten and the stringers were rotten. So in 2005, he has done a transom conversion to a uh, solid back transom, fitted the pod stringers, so all new hardwood stringers, hardwood plywood marine ply marine ply string is the whole way through he's fitted a 309 litre fuel tank now that is for anyone that knows that is a massive fuel tank um, six meter boat we're probably going to try and get more in it but the problem with this uh, one at the moment is that it is all the way down the back there so it, the, the tank runs from my foot there all the way back pretty much all the way to the well now that's obviously an issue with weight down the back there so what we're going to try and do is shorten the tank up. We're going to make a fiberglass tank, shorten it up, get as much, if not more fuel, but we're going to get it further forward to get that weight forward a little bit and just change the ride characteristic, ride characteristics of this boat a little bit. For all intensive purposes, for a home rebuild, the guy has done okay. And we're talking, you know, that's what, 17 years ago that rebuild was done. So, you know, to get him this far and, uh, do it, you know, do what it's done. It's, it's, it's probably caught a lot of fish up there in Queensland and, and you know, gone to the outer reefs and that. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely achieved what it need to have achieved. But now it's starting to show the signs of fatigue and, and the, I guess the shortfalls in the rebuild are starting to show through. So what we're gonna do is gut this boat and start again, purely because I wanna go with a Thermalite construction rebuild. That's uh, a composite material, light, it's lighter weight, but it doesn't rot and that's the biggest key. So this, this hull is, you know, it's gonna last 50, 60 years uh, and that's the plan. So during the rebuild, he's obviously cut a few corners and, and done, done a few things that, you know, that a boat builder probably wouldn't. A home build guy, you know, a home build guy might, you know, make errors like this and, you know, we're, we're, we're no uh, boat building experts but uh, it's just little things like this. Where, where, where his glass these side pockets in, um, you can see where he's tabbed it onto the, uh, the inside of the hull there. He's glassed it, I don't know if you can see in there, but he's glassed straight on top of the old flow coat. Now for anyone that knows uh, fiberglass and how it bonds uh, back to itself, and you know when you're laying laying up multiple layers on top of old layers and things you really need to grind back to the base product and and, and if that was polyester polyester resin or polyester glass underneath you need to bite into it and then put the the new stuff over the top and bond into it that way so look it's starting to show signs of fatigue it's still solid enough don't get me wrong there's a crack there but don't get me wrong look it's it'd still work but it just doesn't look pretty and it's not it's not, uh, not what we want. Our finished result, we want a high, high finished um, craft. It's, you know, it's gonna look good and last a long, long time.
So just moving back, you can see the transoms actually started to crack up as well. Now in the corners here, I did speak to a boat builder about this and it is classic of boats to do this once they've put pods on. So again, with that pod, it's changing where the engine was meant to be and moving it 800 mil back, which, which is essentially making 800 mil lever for that engine to work against this transom. Now you'll see the transom doesn't have any knees going up underneath there. So these stringers probably should have pushed all the way up and come all the way up into here to give that support to stop that le leverage, uh, leveraging from happening. Now the good thing about this transom guys is that it is solid laid up fiberglass, which again is not something that you hear of that often. So it's 40 mil thick solid fiberglass. Now, whatever material is used to lay it up, uh, we're gonna have to inspect that and, and we'll probably grind back some sections to have a look to make sure that it does look structurally sound. So at the end of the day, we're probably not gonna have to uh, do too much with the transom itself, more just the internal parts of the hull, stringers, and obviously all our side pockets, bulkheads, things like that. The transom is probably gonna be okay, and, and we're gonna work with it. We might we might laminate another layer up against it this side to beef it up to 60 mil, uh, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, and you guys will see that along the way as well, because we're planning to uh, do this whole project boat series the right the way through. Uh, so the Bimini, you see the Bimini, is a massive aluminium canopy, huge, two thirds of the boat basically. Now, obviously for our Queensland friends, it's fantastic when you're living up there in the in the tropical uh, heat and you, you know, you're out there long days on the reef with the family, fishing over the side, just bottom bashing. But for us Southerners who are into a lot of game fishing and trolling, uh, it's not gonna work for us. So what we're gonna do is probably sell this. So if anyone is interested in that, uh, drop me a comment or send me a uh, message and uh, we'll see what we can do there. All right, well, you've probably heard me banging on enough about what the plans are to do with this boat. And, uh, this, this video was mainly to come out and just show you what it looked like in the beginning and to just take it for a bit of test drive and just compare what this pod's gonna be like uh, and, and what the vessel handles like now and then when we do rebuild it, bring it back to the original sort of transom configuration and see, see what we can achieve with uh, the difference and hopefully some uh, better results. So uh, without uh, keeping you too much longer, I'll put the drone up and I'll take it for a run and we'll um, get some shots of it spinning around in the, in the beautiful uh, Pacific Ocean. you an appreciation for uh, what the weather's doing here today it's probably you know it's probably blowing eight to ten knots from the south there's not a lot of sea state a little bit of swell but uh, what we'll do now is I'll just put the GoPro facing forward and we'll have a run into the sea and and uh, give it some uh, give it a bit of stick and just see how it, how it comes down how it lands into that into that uh, head sea and then and then maybe try and do a couple other runs across the sea or something like that but I am on my own here today, so it is kind of hard to capture all this. I'm trying to fly the drone and drive the boat at the same time. There's whales around, so I don't want to be too belligerent and uh, you know not keep a proper lookout because the uh, last thing I want to do is uh, sink this boat, and it's uh, not insured yet. So we'll uh, we'll just play it on the safe side today. Well, guys, as you can see here, the sea state wasn't too great, and uh, nothing that a six-meter boat couldn't handle. But what did surprise me and uh, really impress me was the fact that it landed so soft every time. Like I was probably doing 35 uh, odd knots here and it is just eating it up as you can see. And that's just typical of the old school Haynes hull. So that's why we bought this boat and uh, that's why we're rebuilding it.
So guys, I did mention before that the, uh, the boat uh, had some damage to the skeg and as you can see, it's, um, there's a fair bit of damage. There's a fair bit of missing off the bottom of the skeg and all up the leg here. The good news is I know a good welder and uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have that all fixed up in uh, no time but uh, so the story behind the damage was the uh, previous owner was transporting the boat and uh, the coupling unhitched from his uh, vehicle and the uh, trailer took up then on the safety chains and it actually started like the trailer started pile driving in the back of his ute uh, unfortunately he didn't have a strap on the boat and it worked the boat off uh, the trailer all the men oh he was obviously slowing down but <clears throat> it has done some significant damage to the boat obviously a few uh, nice gouge hole there at the front but the chines the chines have been uh, severely damaged and uh, look it, to me it's 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 not too bad like you know, they've, uh, they haven't worn through or anything, but you can see there's a significant amount of fiberglass worn off the corner of the uh, port quarter there, and the whole way along. So. And funny enough, that's how we actually uh, come across the boat. So my old man um, seen it on the side of the road, helped the gentleman put it back on the car, and sent me a photo straight away, because uh, he, he knows I'm interested in these sort of hulls. Then, um, yeah, so here it is. Uh, I made the guy an offer and he accepted it. So here we are with our new project boat. Guys and girls, if you like what you see here and you like uh, the idea of this project and following us, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Uh, and we will bring bringing you content, hopefully on a weekly basis, uh, with updates along the way of our build. Thanks for watching.